It's podcast time. Now, bear with me now, people, right? Because I know, I know there's a lot of cynical people out there, a lot of cynical people in my life as well. You know, those kind of real talk people that don't believe in the mumbo jumbo of yoga and breathing and setting goals in life. But you're about to hear my conversation with Rahul Kapoor. He's a motivational speaker from India uh, and he combines psychology with science and spirituality. And he does it in a way to give you tools to help you through this thing called life. We speak about a lot of things in this podcast, uh, but I really hope this makes a little difference for you. And if it does, please do drop me a line or post a little comment, but just give his techniques a little go. This is a wicked conversation and I'm trying to keep it as real as I can uh, whilst I chat to him. This is the Tommy Sandu podcast and you're about to hear my man, the awesome Rahul Kapoor. Rahul Kapoor, where are you? What is that? Are you inside a spaceship? Is that how you how you do your motivation now from outer space? Are you beyond this realm of this world? And therefore, you what is that behind you? It's like a silver padded <laughs> tubes. Anybody watching this on YouTube? That's actually my home theater in Bangalore City. Oh, is it really? <laughs> you got like a cinema room, do you? It really is, actually. Okay, but the problem with cinema rooms, right? I, I know friends of mine have got them as well. I don't think you'll end up using it. It's a bit like having your own pool or, or like living by the beach. You kind of go, oh, that'd be nice. And then you never go there. Be honest, do you have regular movie nights in your home theater? No, actually, this has turned out to be my studio in the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic time. So if you don't go to office, you use the space. So perhaps I'm here every single day, two times doing sessions uh, from here around the world. Okay, so what you have you got like a massive screen then as well? Is it like a huge projector screen or something? Yeah, uh, I mean it's not really big, but it's, it's it's decent size, and and of course it has all the equipments, the lights and the mics and whatever else that's needed. But yeah, I'm using this. Uh, if not otherwise, the question if you'd asked me this question a couple of years ago, my answer would have been twice in a year. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I love it. So really, what you've got is a glorified zoom zoom screen. It's it's like wow, you can do you can do projections. Absolutely, and, and a lot more than that as well. It kind of turns out to be a great place to uh, you know, spend time with, uh, with kids and family as well, and friends come over, so you know, we kind of use it really well, yeah. What, what, uh, what have you got kids-wise? What's, uh, who's in the clan? So I'm 46, I have two kids. Uh, one is uh, 12 years, that's Diksha, and the older one is 17 years, Dia, and one wife, Deepa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. You, you just stuck with the one wife. You didn't want another one? You didn't, you didn't want to kind of collect, you know, because you got two kids. You didn't want no. Okay, one is one is enough on that. One uh, is just quite a bit. <laughs> what, what are you? What are you like as a dad and a husband? Because I can imagine. You know, there you are, Mister Analysis, Mister. Let's put plans in place and let's have a structure and let's set goals and like, oh, dad, give it a rest. Come on, give us a break. Can't we just be idiots for a bit? None of that works at home. <laughs> None of the so are you are you as you are in your working world as a motivational speaker and, and you know an author and, and everything else that you do are you like that as a father as well well my wife tells me don't try even coming close to being that because i'm not going to listen to any of that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i think it's instincts right i mean people like us who are so driven by doing this almost every day you kind of tend to bring in the shadow of that back at home uh, you do succeed sometimes but most of the times you don't so i think the best thing is that don't try to be what you are at workplace back at home. Uh, I think it's good to just be a, a, just another ordinary member of the family and allow things to take place. I think that's that's the key. Now, relationships are unreasonable, right? You, you have to give your partner the, the space to be unreasonable. I, I don't want to go to that party. Why? Why? You know, my friends are expecting us or, or something. There's a scenario. Um, but I just imagine because you've got this amazing, clear vision of how this thing called life works. Um, I, I don't know, how much slack do you cut your wife and kids to kind of go, oh, it's okay, you know what, I get it. You, you, you just want to be, un you know, you want to be unreasonable. There's no real logic to what you're saying, or you can see why they're saying what they're saying, and it's not for the reasons that they think they're saying it. Do you just let it go? Do you have to let it go? No, uh, you know, Tommy, it's a good question. I think it's relevant for many, many people. Um, uh, I, I struggled through, um, uh, you know, understanding the brain of my own lady for many years. And uh, until I actually understood the science of how the brain works. And uh, there was this one, one moment when I could actually identify uh, the key to 
to what I need to do. So nobody can ever be unreasonable. No human being can ever be unreasonable. It's just well, not well, possible. You, yes, they can. Oh, trust me. Uh, well, I, f I feel like they can. There's this stubbornness, you know, uh, their own ego, illogicness. Right. So, so, so we're going to cut through that and I'll tell you exactly what happens at the, at the real depth of the brain. So everybody, every human being has his logic from where he's operating. So in his brain, he's logical. Right. Now, when we look at that person from our own logic, he may look as unreasonable to us. But is the person unreasonable? Actually, no. Now, how could I crack this code? Uh, when I really did some deep work in the areas of uh, beliefs and, and values, that's really where uh, I could actually sense what really happens in the brain and how relationships, which are supposed to be uh, made in heaven, can look so complicated sometimes, right? Yeah. So let's take, let's, let's, take, let's take an example of my, my younger kid. Now, when food is served in a plate, she'll eat some and she'll leave some. And my wife will say, no, you've got to finish it because you know what? Food should not be wasted. And then there's an argument about this. And then I come into the picture and say, hey, listen, leave her alone. I mean, if she doesn't want to eat, she doesn't want to eat. Do not be unreasonable. And she would say, hey, I'm not. You are being unreasonable. I mean, I didn't even invite you into this conversation. And then after some time, you realize this, that this conversation led to something else. And then a friend of yours comes over and say, hey, what are you guys fighting about? And then you say, we're fighting about the kid not completing the food. Now, if you really go and look at it at one layer, it looked like stubbornness and ego and, and anger. But you go deeper in, you realize that there is an issue with value conflict. Now, what's the value conflict here? Uh, food should not be wasted because so many people in this world don't even have like one meal to eat in a day. And how can we waste it? And uh, what's the value that I'm bringing in? Hey, listen, her, her stomach is full. She doesn't want to eat. It's okay. Fine. I mean, you can't use you can't use her stomach as a dustbin. Now you see what happens? That's a value conflict. A lot of us try to solve issues at the ego level, at the stubbornness level, or whatever else. And you see, they keep coming back again and again and again. It used to happen in my life too. So I'm no saint myself. You know, I've kind of figured out a way because I understand the mindset now. I understand the inner wiring. And the moment you understand that inner wiring. You now know that nobody is unreasonable, but you know your personal ego comes into picture, your personal stubbornness comes into picture, and you you really kind of you know where you are. You you know you can give up, but you will not. The ability to give up there then I think is the key to create relationships, and therefore I say nobody can be unreasonable. <laughs> okay, but then the, the 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 great thing about you though is you have the ability to see through what's being said and look at the mechanics and the wiring, as you put it, of what's going on behind it. That really, your wife is trying to teach your daughter to have food appreciation uh, and not waste uh, because of value in life. And, you know, we all, lucky enough, you know, my kids as well have privileged lives. We have food in the fridge and there's food in the cupboards and a, a roof and housing and family that love them. But there are others that don't. So you want to teach them that. But that's not the issue. The issue is the kids, my kids saying, I just want plain pasta. I'm not going to eat the vegetables on the side. You're like, uh, you know, like, so you, what I'm trying to get to is you have to see beyond what's being said and what the actual conflict is. But you've got that ability. Regular Joe public don't. They don't. And that's the unfortunate part, which is why you see so many people struggle through their lives. And, you know, uh, Tommy, you must have realized uh, so many times we, can't, we, we encounter people who are breathing the last. And when you go and ask them, hey, you know what? Do you have any regrets? And the person will say, no regrets, but that guy on that day dealt with me in a certain manner. I can never even forgive the person. It still hurts me. Why? Simply because we are not living in awareness. Uh, where I come from at this point in time of my life is I try and use a combination of science, psychology, and spirituality at my workplace. And therefore, I'm able to see through that without awareness, we just cannot experience peace, joy, happiness. And which is why Buddhas and Mahaviras of the world, what have they really done? They have just believed in one fact that you have to learn to get into that state of awareness. Now, it sounds easy for you and me to talk about this. Uh, I've gone through the journey. I'm 46. I know for the last uh, 15 years, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really doing the deep work using various tools of meditation. And I understand that even that isn't enough. Sometimes you have to bring in psychology and science. But I think what all human beings must really have in them is a quest to get better every day. And if you have that quest, the awareness levels will keep going higher and higher. If not, otherwise, suffering is a part of life. Enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, do you, actually, you touched on that. You touched on the fact that you said you combine uh, spirituality 
with the psychology and the science. Mm-hmm. Is, do you think that's that's your Indianness, your Indian nature coming through? Because we are, uh, you know, as a, as an Indian race uh, across all religions, very much connected to our spirituality. And actually, not just I'd say South Asian, uh, Asian maybe country, a- Asia itself. Now I'm broadening out slowly as I say this question very much connected to their spirituality and you could argue the western world have lost that so are are you are you taking people back to the basics or are we evolving to a a new future hybrid way of western goal setting work ethic you know spending time in the office in the gym uh, as well as on the mindfulness that everybody talks about right now yeah, actually, uh, so you see, uh, the three key words that I used were science, psychology, and spirituality, not religiosity. Uh, I think as far as we understand that, that kind of brings in a huge distinction. And uh, uh, as far as spirituality is concerned, let me see if I can define it in a, in a, in a nice, simple manner so that we, we can like, have, yeah, yeah, we need it. Everything now we need in a tweet. So unless you can tweet, unless we can't tweet, it, it doesn't make sense. It's too complicated. So yeah, you can give it to me. Give it to me in the headlines. Yeah, you see, he's, uh, you're a person and I'm a person. And when I talk about psychology, you will say, hey, he has a personality and I have a personality. So person, personality. But uh, eventually this body is is running through something, right? There must be some mechanism, some software. We do not know the name for it. You can call it spirit. So if that's spirit, then spirituality. So, uh, you know, you can't take a personality of, out of a person. You can't take spirituality out of a spirit. And the personality... Uh, or the quest for personality is always to get better every day so that you can have more peace and joy in your day-to-day activities. And for the spirit is to be at the uh, at the best that you can be in the in in, in the sense of spirituality so that uh, you gain access to to purify your soul. Now, you also mentioned that is this more an Indian uh, concept, an Eastern concept more to say? And I would say yes. Uh, and is the West catching up with it? I would say yes. But why is it that that I'm fascinated about the West, and I'll t- tell you why. Uh, the spirituality can be a very fuzzy thing. You know, it can't be defined very easy, easily, and therefore we sometimes call it magical. Uh, and also, you when you don't understand something and things happen, we call it magical. Uh, and what the problem with magic is that uh, it things happen by chance. You can't replicate it. But then uh, th- that's the Eastern concept. And if you go to the Western concept, and let's say if you can define. Uh, that magic in terms of what really happened, the step-by-step process, then it becomes logical, not magical. And when it's, and when it's you know, when it's when it's logical, you know, you can replicate it. So you don't succeed by chance; you succeed by choice. All you have to do is to repeat the process again and again and again and again and again and again in the logical world. But when you go back into the magical world, I mean, so-called magical world, I call that spiritual world. But there's Buddha, Mahavira. What they do? They were just breathing and they were doing it in the right manner again and again and again and again. So the fundamentals and the basics don't change. It's just the connotation and the way we present it change. So if your perspective is Rahul, uh, is is there going to be a hybrid model? I would believe yes. Uh, I would believe that, uh, you know, human beings are so curious and so uh, exposed to knowledge now and information now that uh, just a conversation would not help until they understand the why and the how of it, the what of it. And I think uh, we have the information now, so why not? I mean, it's quantum mechanics, whether it's uh, quantum healing. There is a certain science that is that 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 human beings are trying to discover. We have some information, we don't have all. But it's fascinating, right, that yeah. uh, we can combine the two and give people uh, a, a, a great way of uh, living their lives. But but there's, um, there's so much about now how we should live which is based on the old ways like you say taking it back to breathing everybody says that now if you feel life going out of control the first thing you need to do is get your breathing right and you'll kind of gain some level of control and then you you take steps from there breathe i mean breathing it it couldn't get more kind of basic stage one of, of living you know why is it that they they almost felt like they got it more right hundreds, thousands of years ago with, with the people that you're talking about and Buddha and everybody else. Um, and almost like, how were they so smart back then? Because we've evolved for all these, you know, all these generations. We now know more, we should know more about life now than ever before. Um, how, did they, how did they know that then? <laughs> Not everybody did. Then some, some people who actually walked the, on the path of enlightenment did. And, and of course, uh, when you get there, uh, you get into different levels of knowledge, right? I mean, in, in back in the Eastern world, uh, we have uh, we have very clearly defined uh, uh, 
uh, you know, levels of knowledge in our scriptures. You know, we call it Shruta Gyan, we call it Mati Gyan, we call it Manaparava Gyan, Avadi Gyan, and Keval Gyan. Now, a little difficult in this context of our conversation for me to talk about this. And uh, like I said earlier, had I not done my 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 studies in this uh, uh, of the scriptures, I, perhaps I would be, uh, you know, in, in in the same kind of a confusion of how did they do it? Yeah. You know, but uh, once you understand this, that uh, you can you can actually go like what we call you know, our knowledge today, yours and ours knowledge that we're experiencing is degree based. You know, in yeah. those days, yeah. it was siddhi based. There are so many different types of siddhis. You can you can do various degrees to kind of get formal education and they would get siddhis. Here you would actually open your eyes and do it. There you would close your eyes and do. Here you would run around and network with people and there you would network with your inner selves, the frequencies, the vibrations. So I think as a person understands that the world exists and, and Buddha did not know the world exists. Let's accept that, right? He was in quest, he was running around, he was meeting various gurus and trying to, he started off with religiosity. He, he started off with rituals, he started with, uh, you know, the basics that that we could touch, feel, see, but then he realized that's not where the world is, and the world is, uh, is is in your inner in your inner universe. You need to connect, and the only way to connect is breathing. Now, interestingly, you asked me how how would anybody know? I don't think there is a uh, there is a there is a uh, there was perhaps an, a, a structured approach to it, but I think when you are uh, when you are going through sufferings, you would notice that something is happening in your breath. You would notice through that breath something happens in the inner chemicals, and when when those chemicals get uh, uh, they they kind of impact our hormones, and then we obviously have diseases. But I think when you're quiet and when you're in a state of stillness, you realize that is the breath that is actually which is which you can hear, and when you hear the breath and you know it's it's so unstable, the most logical thing that anybody does is to stabilize that breath. And from there, you go into the inner world. So I think it's, again, a state of awareness uh, uh, more than anything else. And actually, I was talking to somebody yesterday in my program. I was doing a program in LA for a group of hotels. And uh, I, you know, I was talking to uh, all these leaders of, uh, of a very successful hotel and they're living a very busy life. And I was teaching them about HRV, uh, the heart rate resonance breathing, right, which is the modern world terminology. And it's uh, four, so you breathe in four seconds, you breathe out six seconds. And uh, when I was talking to them, I was telling them that irrespective of what challenges you're facing in your life, what difficulties you're facing in life, you can use all your techniques of negotiation, assertiveness, and everything else that you have, all your leadership skills, it'll still not work. What will work is your being centered. And your being centered can only be done through your breath. And you notice what I said, four seconds you breathe in, six seconds you breathe out. So four in, six out. Yeah, but four then I'm, I'm, I'm in deficit then. I'm out of air. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the overdraft. I'm yeah, minus yeah, air. Yeah, but, but that's, that's where the spiritual message of the life comes. You take less, you give more. You take less, you give more. You take less, you give more. And the moment you learn to get into taking less and giving more, you feel centered. So the breath itself becomes what I call in uh, Indian context, Brahmastra. You know, I mean, for those who do not know Brahmastra in, in, the, in the Eastern culture, uh, we use the Trinity of Gods, right? The Vishnu, uh, the Shiva and the Maheshwara. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Vishnu, Shiva and Brahma. So Brahma is right on top and Brahma gives you a weapon when he's pleased with you and his weapon can never fail. Uh, just like that breathing can never fail you. It has to work for you 100 out of 100 times, provided you do the four in, six out or three in, five out, you take in less, you give out more. That's what okay. the, the universal principle of life is, yeah. You, you touched on something there. And, and I'm just going to, because again, I want people to listen to this podcast and take something away, take many things away, hopefully. But but I, I seem to be coming across more and more people, and I, I went through a little bit of it myself, but not so much recently, where you just, you, you feel like the whole thing's wobbling. You know, life, you're not got a grip on things. I know people close to me who say they're always on the verge of tears. They can just feel like any second, you know, like you feel brittle, you feel paper thin, you feel like someone could, could just poke you and you, they'll punch straight through you. Um, or the, or the, like I said, they're on the verge of tears all the time. If you're in that kind of delicate state, not quite feeling like you're like in the lane of life, I don't know how to describe, like you're kind of, you know, when you're driving and sometimes you go into the hard shoulder a bit, I don't know if you drive in the UK, but there's a hard, and it goes, your, your car says do that because it's trying to tell you to get back in lane. It's like you're there and you're not, you just don't feel like you've got hold of it. Is that where you would say, do the breathing? I mean, what would you say to those kind of people? I, I kind of want someone to come away with something right now. They can go, okay, let, let me give this a go. 
So let's define what you're saying. Uh, when you feel that you're out of sync with life, you're not centered, you're not in a state of flow, what else could you be experiencing? The opposite of that would be fear, anxiety, stress, depression. I've gone through two of them in my own life. One, when I was super, super struggling with my career, and one when I was super, super, super successful. You know, uh, and I've, I've experienced depression in two extremes of life. So I understand where you're coming from. And, and it is not that you hit a depression just like that. There is a phase before that, then there's a phase after that. And, and I'm not just talking about the simple uh, challenges that human beings go through, like you, you just mentioned, you know, I mean, I, and I know that you're trying to touch upon a very important subject, but in a subtle manner too. Uh, all of us have the inbuilt mechanism and tools to deal with day-to-day uh, -day situations. It's easy and breath or, uh, or just and breath, breath control is one, one approach of solving a problem. The other one could be that you spend time with friends, you talk to somebody, you dance, you sing, you go for a drink. There are hundreds of ways in which you can actually uh, overcome those day-to-day -day challenges. Okay, It's not too much of a problem, but the problem is when it becomes chronic. The problem is when it becomes when it's lasting for no, more than normal time. And that's really when I think we need an access to a really understanding how to get ourselves back on track. Tell me, if, 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 do you think I'm on the right track in terms of why, where you want me to go? No, 100%. That's exactly because that's that's what I'm exactly what I'm thinking. Bless you. You know, there is no right track. It's whatever you, we kind of, wherever this kind of conversation goes. But exactly that. And I think, again, I, I'm thinking back to this one person, Randley, who, who I don't know very well, but I just saw something on social media where she put the camera up in front of her face and she cried into the camera and she just said, this is how I feel all the time. And I just thought, well, first I thought, whoa, I don't think you should be sharing that because that's putting out a social media space, which isn't a healthy space. I'd say you need to do share that with your close family friends. Some people are going to give you direct advice because people just send generic messages. Hey, babes, you're beautiful. No, you're wonderful. We love. And I'm like, mm, that doesn't do it. And, and even, sorry, I'm going to touch on something else now. It, when I see these, oh, let's all take a one minute silence for mental health. And I'm like, do, I don't think that works. I, I think because when you are not in a positive mental state, if you want to call it that, or a content mental state, you're not, you're not looking at the people giving you a minute silence and going, oh, are they doing that for me? Great. It's like you're closed off from it all. You're in your own space, a deep, dark basement of a dungeon somewhere, trying to kind of trying to get back to the, the guy or the girl that you knew you were. And so that that's that's kind of what I'm, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Well, I just love this conversation and I, I, I'm glad you picked it up because I think what we should do is uh, give a few tools to our listeners. And I think if yeah. they can get something out of this, uh, it'll be it'll be worthwhile our effort doing this podcast today. Hmm. Uh, so um, let's understand that when, when you are, firstly, why do we get there? Okay, that's the, the very fundamental question. If you look at it, uh, when I was doing a little research about uh, depression, suicides, divorce, uh, in the East versus the West, uh, uh, three decades ago, then two decades ago, this year, this decade, and now what's happening? And and the East is just matching the West. Uh, and we we the numbers uh, are, are, are whether it's depression or whether it's suicide, whether it's divorce, it's all increasing here in the East as well. Fundamentally, what's going wrong? Uh, if you if you go back three decades ago and have a look at the way we used to live, we used to live in joint families. People were around us. We we could have access to anybody uh, to kind of talk through our problems and not allow today's issues to go on to tomorrow. Uh, I'm talking about, the, about, about our country in India here and of course the Eastern world, not there in the, in the UK, because I know that for a long, you guys have had a different kind of uh, uh, way of living life. So what, ha what used to happen in the East is we had lesser, lesser problems simply because we had access to people. We could talk mm -hmm. our problems through or spirituality or religiosity for that matter. We, we would go to a temple and we would dance, we would sing and we would perhaps even cry in front of the God. And, and then we would do all of these things. Now, my recent podcast, uh, uh, sorry, a video which I made on the, for, for the YouTube consumption was about 10 ways of overcoming depression. And, 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 and what I'm trying to say that is basically you can do simple things like talking to someone, dancing, singing, jumping, exercising. But why don't we do the basics? These basics were happening even without we knowing in our temples or in our in our uh, joint family, uh, you know, conversations and and the way we used to live. But that that 
social thread has been broken now, right? So which we are all living independent lives. You gave me the example of, of someone who would just go on the social media. Perhaps what she's doing is, is, to, is, is to look for a family, a family, when I say a family, a group of people who can identify with her emotion and then say, hey, listen, I can talk to you. Now, when you don't have that, you're just lost in the world of social media and somehow find someone who can just listen to your listen to your problems and challenges and, and help you out from there. Now, this is just like a, a, a quick analysis of, of how we happen to be where we are. The, the, the key here is the tools. So uh, uh, what she's done right now, that example of the friend that you spoke about or the, the random person who you, who, who you got to hear about was she's trying to express herself. Expressing is important. You know, there are three ways of how we can how we can overcome these problems, right? Either you express or you suppress or you release. Now, expression and suppression is from the world of psychology. Uh, release is from the world of spirituality. Now, uh, in this world of psychology, what do we say you can express by journaling, talking to friends? Uh, uh, you know, you can just uh, you, you can just have a counselor or a coach who can talk to you through these challenges and problems. I think all of them are very valid. And I think human beings must go ahead and take help where required. But in, what you have to also do is to get an access into your inner self, figure out exactly what's happening in there. Our needs and wants sometimes are so unreasonable. But even that, I think, is fair deal. I mean, you can talk through a, with a coach or a mentor or a psychotherapist and get your help from there. But I think as you go deeper in, you realize there is one ultimate tool that works, and that tool is breathing. Now, in our days of spirituality, I do Vipassana, like what? 100 hours of non-stop meditation in 10 days, right? So I have an access into that world of how you can how you can look at your breath and gain an access into your inner world, but not everybody can. But therefore, today, science talks about HRV, the heart rate, heart rate resonance breathing. You have an app called Pace Breathing. You can just download the app. I repeat, P-A-C-E-D, Pace Breathing. Download the app. And uh, you can just set uh, any kind of breathing patterns that you're comfortable with. I normally like the four in, six out without any holes in between, because what it does, you know, this is a podcast, otherwise I could have shown you through a visual as well. What it does, it you will only focus on abdomen-based breathing. So you breathe in and you breathe out, and everything is happening in the abdomen. Now, the abdomen is your second brain, right? I mean, you call the stomach as your second brain, but in this context, I'm calling that abdomen chakra as your second brain, let's say. And it starts working from there. You know, that's the place from where courage is generated. Yeah. So courage is generated from the core. The core is where your abdomen is. Your breathing is only focusing on the abdomen, not on the chest, but in the abdomen. And once you get an access into that, and you slow it down, that can solve so many different kinds of problems, like the five elements. Air is one of them, water is the other one. All these elements get balanced out from there. Your chemicals get balanced out, your hormone gets balanced out. You start breathing properly, so you, you start thinking properly. You start thinking properly, so you take the right decisions. This is like, like, like an absolute, absolute, uh, uh, what do I say, the super highway to any kind of problems that you're trying to solve. Breathing it is. Okay, what about, now again, I'm just thinking about my world of people and I'm thinking of different characters. And look, I'm, you can probably tell in my tone, I'm sold. I mean, I've, I've, I'd like to think I'm connected to my mental state, my well-being, and I believe in breathing, and I work out, and I eat, try and eat right, I try and spend time with my kids, do all the things that give me joy. I partly think, I'll come to this in a second, we'll come to this later on, I think I'm selfish because I chase happiness selfishly um, and contentment selfishly to the extent that I, I don't want to be in negative spaces. I've stopped drinking because I was like, man, hangovers are like, it just... It just doesn't work. It, do, it doesn't bring out the best version of me. I, I'm grumpy. I don't want to be around my kids. The, the noise hurts my head. I'm like, that's not me. I love my kids. Like, I want, I want them to jump on me and, and let's play and make a mess and whatever. So um, what was my point? My point was I'm thinking of the guys around me who are working, who are hardworking, successful even, you know, monetarily wise. But they'll be like, ah, oh, mate, all this stuff that Rahul's talking about, you know, it's all a load of mumbo jumbo. It's all like, oh, yeah, breathe. And like, who's got time to breathe now? You know, I ain't got no time for that. You know, like, go, go, go. They're going to say, it, it, they're going to say it's airy fairy. Like, it, like it, it's, it's rubbish. Right. So, um, and, and I think a lot of people um, would actually say that and pass over those comments. And those who would be spiritually driven would say it doesn't really matter because 
all, all of the work that I'm talking about is driven from inside out. As far as I'm peaceful, I don't really care for what others have to say. But uh, an interesting research done, I can't recall the name of the person, but uh, the research is called Oxygen Advantage. And, and this person does some incredible work about uh, what your right breathing patterns can do to you. So he works with some of the world's best athletes and help them to uh, you know, win gold medals at the Olympics. Uh, and all he understands is that if you can just breathe right and uh, give your body the right kind of uh, oxygen supply, then you can have that cutting edge against your, against your competitor. Now, we have that science available today. Uh, we always speak about breathing in terms of uh, oxygen, and uh, carbon dioxide, but nobody understands the role of nitric oxide uh, and what it can do to the brain when you breathe through your nose and you breathe pretty well. Now, all the science was not available. So if, if there's anybody who says that, hey, listen, this all sounds like mumbo jumbo, then I would like to say that what the Western world has done is a great gift to all of us now. We have science to back all of this up. Uh, in fact, a lot of people who are struggling in their, uh, uh, in their meditations now can actually work with science and make meditation possible as well. So it doesn't really, so it, I think it's the magic and logic both coming together. So I, I wonder why anybody would still have such doubts. And if they do, I think we have the science to back it up. But you, see, you see, that's what I kind of wanted to get across. You're solid on this. When we, and, I, and you know, I've heard you and I've seen your videos, you're a hundred percent rock solid or in like in a nuts and bolts kind of way breathe people just whatever you're going through. if you're going through that or if it's all a bit much or whatever it maybe it's just a moment of of stress and anxiety and it's not a, you know something that's taken up a big part of your life you're saying it just take it back to basics the the breathing it feels like it's the overlooked magic tool it really is, uh, you know, Tommy, and I think I, I feel so sad about the fact that uh, one thing we do as human beings from the time we take birth till the time we die is actually breathing. Uh, we breathe more often than we eat and drink and everything else, right? Because those are the fundamental things that we're doing consistently between the first breath and the last breath. So breathing is the only most consistent thing. So it's not about the fact that you and I are breathing. The question here is, are we breathing right? It's not about the fact that you and I are living. The question is, are we living right? It's not about you and I are working. Are we working right? And eventually, who 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 do we admire? Whose autographs do we take? Whom do we want to stand next to while we're taking autographs of people who are extraordinary? And what are these extraordinary people doing? They're doing the ordinary so very well that they become extraordinary. So I think bottom line of the whole story is that we have to ask ourselves consistently that do we want to be victims of of bad health and diseases and then become uh, become patients. Uh, uh, of, of various therapists or you want to consume medicine all your life and you are consuming something, right? I mean, most chronic diseases means uh, you have to be consistently taking those medicines. My only question to all such people is this, that A, option A you have is take those medicines. Option B is just breathe and breathe and learn the breathing and master it so very well. Today, we have all sorts of tools available. We have science backing it up. We have so many breathing techniques available. Uh, you come to India, you're going to talk about, uh, you're going to talk about all your yogic breathing and now you go to the west and you talk about oxygen advantage or heart rate variability which gives you scientific data and tools uh, to kind of do that bottom line is this that if you want to get better you want to have a greater life you want to be happier you use the word happiness right yeah uh, you want to be happy then you cannot you cannot experience happiness with the law of diminishing returns something which gives you happiness now makes you feel sad that means you say something is wrong uh, so you, you want you want happiness which is uh, ever growing and and never ending and uh, the easiest way to do that is that you really get an access into what's happening inside of you. So there is a bigger word uh, for us to, uh, a bigger word, a bigger emotion, a bigger state that we can experience. And that is not happiness, but that's peace of mind. You know, I think if we can be in the state of peace all the time, happiness is just a subcomponent thereafter. And again, for that, I think bottom line is that we have to create awareness. We have to tell people that there are hundreds of ways of solving your problems, but something that will come to you naturally, uh, it's free, you can access it, you can control it as many times as you want throughout the day, while watching television, while, while sitting and talking to a friend, uh, while you're working, while you're, just, while you're just being quiet. One thing that can always stay with you consistently is your breathing, provided you know how to breathe right. Right, okay, brilliant. 
I love this conversation, by the way. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm truly privileged to have you on this podcast. But uh, there's so much more I want to quickly get through because I know time is a, a factor as well. Um, you say <clears throat> winners are made and not born. OK, one of the things, uh, one of the many things uh, that you share. And I know you run seminars and classes that like you say to many different top people. But that that whole concept, uh, I st- I'm, st- I'm, at, I'm 44, so not, not you know, only around your age as well. So I'm still I'm working out now. I think you, you got into it a bit earlier. Uh, so um, but winners are made and not born. That tells me, you know, we should maybe set goals, set plans. And, you know, you, you kind of have the, all that uh, all those kind of mechanisms or structures, I suppose, in place. But then on the flip side, people say, hey, let go, be at one. So I'm I'm sort of always torn between this kind of, do I chase? Am I supposed to chase the work, the gigs, or the happiness, the create the holidays or the moments and the time with my children? Or do I go, ha, ah, woosa, let it, it would all just come if I just sit and breathe uh, and relax and be at, be at peace. Uh, do you see what I mean? Active, active searching and not. No, that's a that's a very uh, profound question. Actually, if you really look at it, because ah. when you, you know, winners are made, not born. Uh, yeah. So, uh, because we are on the topic of uh, spirituality, and now you're slowly moving into practicality of living this life. So, let me see if I can try and merge these two these two concepts together. Was Buddha uh, born as Buddha? No, he wasn't. Was he experiencing sufferings? Yes, he was. So, what does he do? He works on himself right so did he set a goal of course he set a goal but was his goal all inclusive or was it selfish that's the question yeah now i've worked with uh, i've had the privilege of working with india's uh, ex president dr apj abdul kalam i've worked with cricketers like sachin tendulkar uh, with bollywood stars like shahrukh khan and lots of other people like narayan murthy from the business world formula 1 drivers Every time I see these amazingly successful people, we see there's a pattern building up there. And the pattern is that they are less driven by motivation and more driven by inspiration. Motivation makes you push, pull, do things with aggression. Inspiration just allows you to be in the state of flow where you try to access your inner potential and you get the better version of yours coming to life every now and then. I think that's that's the... That's the psychology people need to understand. Most of us uh, are driven by what we see around us and we believe that to be the truth. It not necessarily is the real truth because if majority of the people are doing something and you consider that as a truth, well, I think there's a fundamental problem there. What we need okay. to understand, yeah. I, I, I love it. Um, you touched on Shahrukh there. I, I spent a, a whole day with Shahrukh when we were filming something and I, I met him at the airport. He got off a flight. Um, we did a silly thing. We brought a red carpet to the airport, rolled it out on the floor. Uh, but he stopped the camera. I remember the video. He stopped the camera for it and he went, Tommy, how are you? He went, when you're okay? And he held both my hands. When you're okay? I went, oh, and it kind of threw me because I've got producers, camera, and I'm trying to get the Shahrukh moment. I went, oh, oh yeah, I'm good because we've met a couple of times before. But then that guy did not stop. So he went from there straight to uh, one interview. Then he went to see his son, who's at school in London. Uh, and then he went somewhere else. Then he went into an interview. Then he had to go change it to a tuxedo. And I'm like, I- I'm, you know, I was tired following him around. Now, that, he's not got no time to breathe. I know he likes a cigarette. I don't think that counts as breathing. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, like, um, so again, he, he's, he, he's working at such a pace. I, I wonder how someone like that, and there are many of us, who have or maybe CEOs or business people or people who are running their own cafe. You know, it doesn't have to be on a Shahrukh level who are going to be flat out. Who, I, I don't know how, I don't know how you manage that, those processes. I don't know how you manage that into your life when right. you are in demand. Right. So it's, it's a very simple statement, which can kind of uh, help us to understand what's really happening there. And hear me. Uh, it says, if you wish to go fast in the outer world, you have to learn to slow down in the inner world. Every wow. person you see, hi, every, so every, so I'm going to give you the answer in, in two different uh, aspects so that we really get this right. Uh, if you wish to really be successful, you need to understand that there are fundamental things you have to do. And the fundamental things is be good, be nice, be kind, be compassionate, be forgiving, just be a good giver. Just keep giving and giving. If you look at all of these factors of 
of, or should I say, attributes of human existence, the moment you become what I've just mentioned, you go into the state of just being. When you're in the state of just being, the first thing that happens is you experience inner peace. When you experience inner peace, the in, if you go into the inner world, a little more inner into understanding what's happening, your body slows down and the body can never slow down. The mind can never slow down until and unless your breathing slows down automatically. So it's the breath that actually works. So the aspect one is the outer aspect. Try to be as good as you can, because that's really the, the essence of human existence. And as you do that in the inner world, the other aspect is that your breathing just keeps slowing down and down. And when that happens, you can expand and you can work for 20 hours a day without getting tired and yet feel so completely, so completely one with the universe that you know also the truth is that the, all the great work that you do is not for yourself, but it's for the larger good of the the mankind and and the entire universe and every living being over here to be in that state is the key to actually igniting your inner potential okay um i feel bad saying this but i'm going to say it. okay so um because i said i feel selfish uh, sometimes because now i've decided um i don't want to give myself to everybody like i did have done in the past like i i, I really have always from a very young age felt it's nice to give. It's nice to be nice. I think it's probably an ego thing. It's a presenter thing. I know I'm on stage. I'm, I want to be liked. That's why I do what I do. I do comedy because you want to get the laughs. But I do think comedy and uh, food, because I love cooking, um, I think it's very intimate because I want to make you laugh. I want to give you food to put inside you to for you to enjoy. I want you to love this meal that I've created for you. So I think I'm always looking for connections. Uh, but I've been told by people who love me, that you're a mug, Tommy. You, you spend all this time giving yourself to this person. That, but he's an idiot. He's taking advantage of you. He just wants to be with you because he knows you're going to get him into that place or whatever. But I, I've always said, I don't care. I'm doing it from me. I'm doing it what my mum would say, kulla dil, you know, kulla, open heart I'm doing it with. I, and I don't want anything back. I don't, I don't pick up friends or contacts for any gain, if I meet you and we swap numbers, that's cool. Uh, even like with the podcast, I've got to say, you know, my producer will say, hey, you know, you know, get, get people's numbers. I'm like, uh, I just don't like doing that. I, I just want it to, I want it to be. So what I'm trying to get to is I want to be nice, but I don't want to be a mug. How do I deal with that? <laughs> do, do, does that make sense? Do, are you familiar with the term mug? It's a London phrase, being a mug, being, being, being a walkover. And I, I, I know where you're coming from. And of course, monks and walkovers are two very distinctly different, uh, uh, you know, words and, and, and has different kind of connotations and emotions. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what my, what I learned from my mentor. And today, uh, I think incidentally is also the World Mentors Day. So I think it's a, one of oh. the best ways to pay tribute to my mentor, Valla Bansali, um, a, a billionaire. Uh, but more than that, he's one of the most spiritual being that I've ever encountered. Uh, he does some incredible work at the highest level. Uh, and yet, whenever I seek his help, he's available. It intrigues me how he manages to do that when he's rubbing shoulders with the prime minister and the various you know, uh, you know, business leaders from around the world. And how does he find time for me? I mean, what is it that he does that he has time for me? And then I realize it's not just for me, just for anybody who seeks his support. This is what he says, and, 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 and I love this. He says, you, you don't have to be there for all the people, all of the time. But you should be there, you must be there for people when they need you most. That could just be five minutes, but that makes all the difference. And I think that is the answer to your question, Tommy. As far as we give ourselves to people when they need us most, I think it makes a huge difference to their, their existence in this world. And uh, remember, uh, that is where the essence of human life really comes alive, that, which is that we learn to give uh, selflessly. But yes, of course, you, you can't really lose sight and then keep giving your time to all the people uh, all of the time that you, you don't even know, uh, you know, what you need to do with yourself. So back to spirituality. In spirituality, we use two important words, swa and par. Swa as in self and par as in others. So typically what the sentence means is put yourself before others. It may sound very awkward, right? Like an antithesis of what we've been learning in schools and colleges. Yeah. We all say, you know, do this for others. But to remind you that I did not use the word selfish, self-centered. I use the word swa, self. Self means 
you need to focus on self-development, self-growth, self-awareness. You cannot lose sight of yourself. If the moment you do that and you start helping others, then you become a walkover. Uh, but you are always focused on you, the being, and you always invest time in yourself uh, and, and you keep growing both internally and otherwise, then you become the monk. So that's the differentiation of the two words. I hope you like okay. that. <laughs> okay, I, I like it. Um, final thing now. What's yeah. it all about, Rahul? Where, why, what is this? Because, okay, my, my, I'm, I'm, and while I'm sure you've got an answer for it, but I'm going to give you my little take on it is, it's a game. This thing of life, it feels like a game that you have to play in a certain way. And I think I call it a game because I want to have fun. And I'm, like I said, I'm selfish with my pursuit of good times. Um, but I just think there's, there's like, a, like a computer game, there's obstacles and challenges and how am I going to overcome it? And I might try and climb that little wall like I'm a Mario Kart char Mario character, but then I slide down and it doesn't quite work and then I approach it a different way. And I think that's for me as well. But ultimately, whatever the challenge is, I want to enjoy the game, but I do know the game's going to end. So then you kind of think, well, what's the point in the game? What, what, what's going on, Rahul? I know it's a big one just to finish on, but I just wondered what your take was on it. Now, before I actually uh, I, I leave you with my thoughts on that, I just want to thank you. And uh, you know, you've been an absolutely fantastic host. I love the way yes. you've taken me through this conversation. Very, very refreshing. Uh, also that you're such a good human being yourself, right? You, you like to live. You don't know that. You can't tell, Rahul. You can't tell. I could be, I could be devious and dark and, 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 and I don't know. I can't think of other words. Yeah. And, and, but we don't know. And that's the other thing. I'm not a very good reader of people. You know, like some people can just can go, uh, I get, get bad vibes about him. I don't I don't get bad vibes about anyone. And I actually don't believe there's any th such thing as a bad person. I think, uh, OK, here's my other little line of life. I don't know if I've read this somewhere or I've nicked it uh, or, or whether I've made it up myself. But I call it like the rocks on the side of the ocean where the water crashes against the rocks. They go jagged where the water runs over it smoothly. They got they got the rocks turn smooth as well. And I think we are all products of the waves that have hit us through our life. So if you faced jagged, uh, fierce waves, if your dad was abusive, if you've seen your mum go through hard times or whatever it is, it's going to send you a certain way in life. And I think people are, ultimately people just want to be loved and people just want to be liked and want to be appreciated. And I think that's why we're here. It's just for that reason. I don't know. I don't know. No, you said it so well. You, you said it so well. So if I can kind of pick up from there. Now, I know you for, for a little while and I, I, I can still say that I know you and I can be living with someone for 20 years and yet not know the person. So it's not about the time. It's about the feelings. It's about what you experience in that moment with the person. So that's point one. Uh, point two is, uh, again, going back from, from you know, picking up from where you where you kind of really gave some sense of life, and which is that it's a game. And you know that... Uh, that somebody's going to win the game and you're just playing the game so you're going to have the, the 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 moments of highs and the lows can you enjoy another you know you you really use those words can we really enjoy most human beings can't enjoy uh for us enjoy equals to success and anything else which is not success means to say i can't enjoy i suffer and i think back to spiritual the spiritual world itself i mean what are we talking about you, you're going to have you're going to have the good times and the bad times. What you need to do is to stay equanimous and just experience because that's what your role is. So, you know, we've come into this game to play. Uh, we have given our characters. Uh, the emotions uh, have to be experienced by all of us. But I think somebody just forgot to tell her, give us the caveat. And the caveat was to say, hey, listen, go enjoy. And if somebody says, what's the definition of that? And well, the answer is that enjoy means stay equanimous with, in the good times and the bad. And if you can do that, then the game is not just played but it's won and it's not just going to be win and lose it's going to be win and win i think that's the ultimate quest of life all of us uh, if you can look at life as not a game of winning and losing but a game of winning and winning i think that should just put us uh in a state of ease peace and flow and that's a perfect place to, to wrap things up i actually got goosebumps as you said that that's um that's really lovely. Rahul, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and to everybody listening, I hope you've got something from this. Uh, where can people check out more of your stuff? Where, where are you? I, I know where it is, but you want to just give them the official handles? Uh, it's on YouTube. There's lots on YouTube. 
like you said, people can find us <laughs> if they really like us. Uh, but I, I, I'd like to take a squeeze in the moment. Uh, I, I'm currently working on two quests of my life. My quest one is I'm working on the subject of anger. Uh, this this uh, kind of uh, came by when my, my younger daughter was six years of age. Uh, I was in New York, Manhattan at Rockefeller Center. I'd just given one of the best speeches of my life. I came back, I was given the Outstanding Young Persons of India Award and I fell ill. And uh, it took me uh, many years to overcome that, that, that illness, but my daughter, once wrote a small note to me saying, Rahul, uh, she said, Papa, I love you, but why do you get so angry? So I'm writing a, a beautiful book on uh, a quest of a dad to overcome an anger, which is a gift that I want to give back to people. And the second one is a ded dedication to uh, women of the world. Uh, the program that I'm launching for them is called How to Attain Inner Peace. Uh, and I wish to reach out to 1 million women uh, through this program and help them live a great life. And the program will be for absolutely no cost whatsoever. So uh, we launched the program in Los Angeles already uh, three months ago, and we're going to be going for a worldwide launch. Uh, so if people want to know more about my work and these little uh, projects and uh, 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 the quest of my life, then they can reach out to me at www.rahulkapoor.in. That's the website. That's R-A-H-U-L-K-A-P-O-O-R.in. And if you really wish to write to me, then you can write to me at hello. That is H-E-L-L-O, hello, at Rahul Kapoor, R H U L K A P O O R dot I N. So that's the way to reach out to me. And of course, uh, social media, you can just bring me around. That's lovely. And actually, just because you touched on that, I talked about this with my wife. The role of the role, what is the role? I mean, how, whatever the role is at the moment, the role of women is, has changed a lot in a short space of time because what was typically, and particularly for, for Asian women and South Asian women, Indian women, Pakistani women, you know, and, and the, the British version of, of those cultures and the Canadian versions and the Australian versions who have gone into Western societies, m many people will still expect them to be a certain kind of way because that's how their mum was or their grandparents are or what society dictates but they're changing, they want things for themselves, then they are in conflict. My wife is in conflict with how much time she gets with the kids because she feels that's her role, along with pursuing her career and her fitness and her yoga and everything else that she wants to do. So it's, I, you know, it's great, we don't need to go into it, but it's great that you're, you're, you're talking to women about that now because I think even, I know it's obvious to say with Me Too movement, I, I just think that is all us working out how we are all mixing and getting on together because it's changing it really is and uh we're gonna save this for maybe another conversation someday yeah. uh, this is an am amazingly important subject but i just uh, want to leave you and the uh, and our audience on a, on a nice note we talk about gender diversity india has always advocated gender diversity you look at all all uh, our goddesses, but there's the goddess of money, the goddess of, that's Lakshmi, goddess of education, that's Saraswati, goddess of food is Annapurneshwari. You, you know, India has always believed in gender diversity. And uh, well, I want the world to learn from what we can give to the world uh, on, on that front. But really, I mean, I think I would be an, complete, an absolutely incomplete human being without the lovely women in my life, my mother, my wife, my kids, uh, my sisters, my friends. And I think the easiest thing that I can do, the smallest thing I can do is to give them and all the other women a gift back in return, which is how to live uh, with a state of absolute inner joy and peace. Love it, look forward to that, Rahul. Good luck with everything that you're doing. Please, can we catch up again uh, in some time? I know I've taken up loads more time than I was, I was intending to, but this, is, this has been so great, you don't understand. And hopefully you can hear it and see it in my eyes. I mean it. You know, it's been such a great conversation. I, I really appreciate your time. So I let's catch up real soon. Absolutely. It's an absolute Thank you, Rahul. Thanks very much. I heard, genuinely, this is just as a fact. I heard that if you hit subscribe to this podcast now, if you have subscribed on Apple or on Spotify or on GeoSavan or wherever you are listening right now, if you are subscribing and getting that on a regular, which means you get the little notification when the new episode comes out, Fact, this is a fact. Don't tell no one else's. If you hit subscribe, you can eat as many jalebis as you want and you will never put on weight. I don't I know. I don't understand the logic. It makes no sense to me. I mean, how's a podcast relate to the DNA way in which your body breaks down jalebi sugar stuff running through your cell? I don't understand, but what I do know, it's a little cheat to life. So if you like jalebis, then you should hit subscribe to this podcast. Oh, and follow us on social media too. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Follow us, eat jalebis, be happy.